Today we're going to be talking about apologies, and we're going to be talking about how an apology in marriage can be so powerful, but we're also going to be talking about a few ways that it can also be a problem. So we hope you'll stay tuned and enjoy this conversation. Hello, folks. Welcome back to another episode of the Redeemed Marriage Podcast. This is Rusty and Heather Bryant. And we're glad to be back with you. To, it's it's probably daytime when most of these people are <laughs> listening. I feel like we should be doing pillow talk. Uh huh. This might be the latest that we have ever recorded a podcast. So, um, but we have a great topic, and so we're excited about sharing that with you, and uh, looking forward to this discussion um, about saying you're sorry and apologies. So, uh, this kind of came about, um, after we heard something in a sermon and, uh, what was it that was, that was said? Can you even remember? No, I can't. Absolutely. So he, he was joking. He was talking about, um, his wife and he was, um, just being funny, but, and it made me laugh, but then it also really sparked a, um, just a thought in my head that I was like, there's a lot to that that we could unpack. But he said he wakes up every morning and just says, good morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm sorry for whatever I'm going to do today. I'm sorry for what I haven't said. I'm sorry for just, I'm sorry. Yep. And of course it got a big laugh and it was funny, but, um, but I don't know. I just, I just kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thought it'd be something we could talk about. Well, he was he was making a a comment um, to the guys in the room, and he was basically saying, "You need to be willing and able to say you're sorry, and just all the time." Yeah, and uh, there's there there is some truth to that, um, but there's also some some big problems with that. But I started thinking about it, um, and I thought about it a lot during the day today, and just how. You know, a lot of problems in marriage and a lot of a lot of conflict and arguments could be avoided if one spouse or the other is just willing to say that they're wrong and mm-hmm. just to apologize. And and I was I was thinking about it and I know when we've done you know, as we do marriage coaching, we talk about um, just conflict a lot uh, with with the couples that we're working with. And we admit a lot of times that, you know, before we, we say pre-affair sometimes, mm-hmm. but, you know, 15, the first 15 years of our marriage, you had, you had a lot of trouble saying that you were sorry. Yes. So I what, also didn't think that I was ever wrong. Well, that's, <laughs> I guess that's why you'd never said you were sorry. Hey, yep. But yeah, I mean, I thought you might could address that a little bit, just that side of it. That's, you know, what is it that, why is it that some some people can't apologize and and then how powerful it can be when you do say that you're sorry? Yeah. Well, I think that a lot of the problem with not being able to say you're sorry is pride. Just even like I could convince myself that I wasn't wrong, even if I saw your side, like I still was able to manipulate the discussion to somehow make it your fault. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like even, you know, even if I I don't know, like I would say um, if you would say you were sorry, I would even use that against you. Like, I don't need you to be sorry. I need you to agree with me. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, like there was just so much pride wrapped up in what, um, how I was before that I just had trouble with that altogether. Mm -hmm. Well, and we know though, that words, the words, I'm sorry, they can be so powerful and, you know, they can be so healing Sure. And and such a, I mean, you know, just such a a, a healing, um, you know, when someone can actually admit that they're wrong. Right. And I know that we've talked about that just in, you know, here it is 12 years later, 
And, you know, I've told you before, and we tell this to couples too, that I don't really ever get tired of hearing you say that you're sorry Mm -hmm. for for what you did. And it's not that I don't want to hear it all the time, Mm -hmm. but, you know, for you to be able to come to me even at you know, unexpected times, not prompted by any, by anything, but just to say, you know, I am, I am really sorry for what I did. And I know how bad that I hurt you. And that's, to me, it's just so powerful because it's just an acknowledgement. And the biggest thing is, I think that it's a, it's not that it's not an acknowledgement of more it's not really so much of what you did mm-hmm. it's an acknowledgement of the pain that you that's right. that you caused me that's right that's the part that's comforting that's the right. part that's powerful mm-hmm. it's it's really not um it's not about you it's just about you acknowledging the feelings that I have right well and when I say um that I'm sorry because we do we we relive our story a lot because of what we do, you know, Mm -hmm. with marriage coaching and our podcast, we have to talk about um, our story and the pain that came along with it. And so it is very common for me to just be like, gosh, I am just so sorry that I hurt you. Um, And I think that that is so much of apologies is being able to say that you hurt your spouse. Um, I think that even when we may not agree on who is at fault. Like there doesn't even have to be a clear definition of who's right and who's wrong. Um, I mean, I think that there's plenty of times that we've had um, disagreements, um, even in the healthier part of our marriage in these past 12 years, where we probably both um, had really valid points and, 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 in, in our disagreements where, you know, it wasn't necessarily you were right and I was wrong. It was maybe the way I handled that or the words that I chose to speak um, to you or the way I spoke them to you were hurtful. And so you can own that and say that you're sorry for that, um, even if you're not saying I think that I'm sorry is not always linked to I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think because I think it, a lot of times it's just an acknowledgement of your feelings, mm-hmm. and and it's not the well. I'm sorry you feel that way. That, yes, <laughs> it's that's not right. that. And <laughs> because you're taking ownership of your part, like you're taking like when I say I'm sorry, I'm taking ownership of my part in it. Mm-hmm. So you should never say, "Oh, I'm sorry that you feel that that way. you feel that way." Mm-hmm. I mean, you could say, "I'm sorry that I made you feel that way." Mm-hmm. I mean, that's very valid. Like my words, the way that I made you feel, my words cause that, and I'm sorry, but not I'm sorry that you feel that way. That's yeah. that's putting it back in their court, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that the, what struck me so much about um, that guy's statement is, you know, he was just saying, and I mean, it was, it was hilarious the way he was doing it. I'm not finding fault in it. It just sparked these feelings in me where I can remember me as a child um, doing this to my parents and then also our children doing this to us. And I, don't think it is like it has to be so avoided in marriage where you would just say, I'm sorry to get the other person to shut up. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, like if they're saying, Hey, you, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, just that real quick flippant, say you're sorry. So you'll get off my back. And I think that's a very, very dangerous thing in marriage. Yeah. Well, I think that just like we open this up by talking about how you had such a hard time admitting mm-hmm. and saying that you were sorry because you never thought you did anything wrong. And it was just in my nature to want to avoid the conflict because mm-hmm. I knew I knew how every conversation was going right. to go. And so I just I felt like I was just always saying, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Sort of like what this man said. It was yeah. just kind of like, yeah, I'm waking up today and I'm just like, if anything goes wrong, I'm just saying I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's not, I mean, that's not a healthy way mm-hmm. to handle conflict. And mm-hmm. so that's where, you know, where you can say, 
an apology can be so powerful in marriage. It can be so healing and so soothing, and and it can, and it can, um, you know, um, smooth things smooth over. Smooth things mm-hmm. over. Yeah, it's late. I'm yeah. trying to use <laughs> words, um, but there's also at the same time there's also some problems. Mm-hmm. So just as much as there's power. Um, in an apology, there's also some problems. And I think, honestly, I I thought of three things, and that Mm -hmm. was one of them, what Mm -hmm. you just said. And it's the, you know, I'm going to say that I'm sorry just to avoid conflict. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not healthy, and it's just trying to get out of discussion, trying to get out of acknowledging feelings. and, and, And I think that so much of that has to do with like what we said, where one or the other is really strong willed, doesn't want to ever admit that they're wrong. And so the other one just finds themselves saying mm-hmm. over and over. So if that's a if that's a situation that a couple's in, do you have any sort of I mean, how do you how do you remedy that? How do you fix that? Well, I don't I mean, I think the part that has to be admitted is that you're saying I'm sorry to avoid listening to the heart behind it. Like I can remember saying I said I was sorry, like I'm sorry. There's no more. There's no need to talk about it anymore. I said I was sorry. And I missed kind of the heart behind how I hurt you. So, I mean, I think it's important to be able to say, you know, that's great that you're sorry, but I want I want you to understand the reason behind, you know, why it hurt me so that it doesn't happen again. Mm-hmm. Because that's that's the sign of being knowing that you're truly sorry is the action changes. Mm-hmm. And I can remember talking about that so much with our boys. Like you, you know, if they did something disrespectful or wrong or if they broke um, a rule whatever if you if they just say sorry and then the next time they turn around and do it again well that's not repentance Mm -hmm. it's just words Mm -hmm. um, to get them out of the situation and so I just think that if you're missing the heart behind it or if you're missing the you know you said you were sorry but yet you did it again and mm-hmm. you did it again then you're not you're not sorry because it's not changing your behavior yeah well that's it that's the second problem that I came up with is that ch- um, that a, that an apology that change should accompany that's right a, an apology and it's kind of like what you said if you're if you just are constantly saying change saying you're sorry but nothing ever changes, then what good is that? Mm-hmm. And it's and it's almost uh, there is a a biblical correlation to this too. Um, and it reminded me when you were saying that in the scripture where it says, you know, do I just keep on sinning so that grace abounds? You know, mm-hmm. because we're forgiven, so just yeah. keep on sinning and just right. you know, ah, oh, just ask for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And that's not the heart behind that. And so, you know, we have to, when we, when we recognize a wrong and when we apologize for it, then there has to be some sort of a bend towards change. Now, I mean, you're not going to always fix things immediately, but it can be because some of it's, some of it's a little more than just fixing the problem on the spot. I mean, some of it is bigger. And so some of it is, some of it requires a big heart change, which may take place over time, sure. but you have to start. You have to start moving in that direction, or the apology just doesn't mean anything at all. That's right. So I, I did. I did think of a third um, problem with an apology, and it's the saying that that I love is that apologies with a but. <laughs> Stink. <laughs> see it. See what uh-huh. we did there. But but <laughs> see what we did there. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So a lot of times, an apology when you say that you're sorry, so many times it's followed up with but, mm-hmm. and then there's an explanation right. or a defense mm-hmm. or something. It's just well, I'm gonna say the apology mm-hmm. because I know that's what I'm supposed to do. 
but, mm-hmm. and that stinks. Yeah. yeah. And, and not just a, um, not just explaining it away or a defense, but my favorite is, um, saying, I'm sorry. And then pointing out what the other person should be sorry for too. And so there's all of those things that go along with an apology that take away the, the realness of it and take away the heart behind it is if you then turn it and say the reason why I did it, I'm sorry, but the reason why I did it, or I'm sorry, but you did this, then it takes away the genuine, you know, it takes, it takes away the feeling of that was heartfelt. Yeah. You know? Well, I think more important and, and probably even more powerful than an apology most of the time is just listening and then validating mm-hmm. the other person's feelings. And, you know, this is one of those tools that we've talked to, you know, we've talked about the heart talk a bunch of times on here, and we go through it with our, um, in our marriage coaching. So we've done this with a lot of couples. But, you know, one of the things that we talk about in, in the heart talk is, is that, I mean, one of the rules is that the, the person that's that's listening doesn't doesn't get to say that they're sorry. Mm-hmm. Like that's a part of it. Right. And because we believe that it's more powerful to sit and listen and hear what the what the person has to say, what your spouse has to say and repeat it back to them and then instead of just trying to get out of it by saying I'm sorry, you validate their feelings and what they've approached you with and then at a later time, that's when you can think about it and it can it can really you can let it do some some heart surgery and then you can come back at some point and say hey you know what you you were right and I'm really sorry I'm sorry I did that I'm sorry that I hurt you all of those things but it gives some space and it also gives it it doesn't feel like well I was just pressured into saying that I'm sorry now I think there's also some massive power in saying that you're sorry when you know you've messed up, even if your spouse doesn't say anything to mm-hmm. prompt you right. to say that you're sorry. Like, that's the sign of a real healthy marriage, and that's the sign of a real healthy person right. that can admit and be be able to come to your spouse and say, hey, I'm real. I'm really sorry that I did this mm-hmm. or said this. Said yeah. this, yeah. And that's also a very, very, very good indication that the Holy Spirit is alive and well in them because it is the Holy Spirit's prompting them to apologize for something that they may not even know about or haven't indicated at all that they were hurt by it. Mm. But you know, I mean, the Holy Spirit's prompting you to be like, hey, those words were not kind or that action was not good. And I think that that's part of my story that I really, really regret is that in the infidelity that was there, I was caught instead of confessed. Mm -hmm. And so even if the Holy Spirit was prompting me to say, hey, I've messed up um, before I knew I was caught, I, it was so buried and so deep in sin that it I didn't I didn't acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. Um, I you know maybe you could argue that I didn't hear it, um, but I think I probably did, but just pushed it mm-hmm. back and pushed it back until I didn't hear it anymore. And so if you feel that prompting to apologize for something that they may not even know about or haven't expressed that they they're hurt by. Like, listen to the Holy Spirit yeah. and and don't push it back and don't ignore it. Like, go to your spouse and say, man, I don't even I don't even know if I hurt if you if this hurt you or not, but I'm sorry because my words were not kind or my intentions were not right. Um, just apologizing. I love that. Like mm. what you said, apologizing um, before it's even before you even know if it's really an issue. Yeah. Taking ownership of it. Well, and that's where we talk sometimes about godly sorrow versus worldly mm-hmm. sorrow because when you're able to to approach your spouse and say that you're sorry, then it's just 
it really is proof, like you said, of the Holy Spirit working. And so you already know that that godly sorrow is taking place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's the part that's so powerful for the spouse. And, you know, healing from something, even if it's something that's really big, it's it can be jump-started and so much faster if an apology happens rather than getting caught, and then you have to apologize. So being able to come and confess and apologize, it just it just starts the whole process of godly sorrow over worldly sorrow. Yeah. You know, another part of um, the words, I'm sorry, that I really, really love is it doesn't even have to be lined up with something that you've done. You can just be aware that your spouse is hurting and being able to say, I mean, even if it's as simple as, I'm sorry, you've had a rough day. Mm. You know, it's just saying that you are with your spouse and that you're sympathizing with them and that you're journeying with them and that you're aware of how they feel and being, you know, it, it's not being dramatic, like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I mean, it's just being encouraging mm-hmm. and aware and saying, gosh, I'm I'm sorry that you're going through this, mm-hmm. or I'm sorry that this happen, is happening to you at work, or, you know, it's just being intentional um, with your words. And, and as much as they um, can bring hurt, they also can bring so much good if you are making sure that you're speaking in wisdom, Mm -hmm. you know? Well, and I think what you're describing there, you know, you may say the words, I'm sorry, but really what you're doing is just validating their feelings. That's right. And, you know, just being able to communicate that and show, like you said, that you're, that you're walking alongside your spouse, you know, that you're in tune with their feelings, you're in tune with their attitude and, and, you know, what may be going on in their life. Um, you know, throughout the day, it just, it just speaks so much and it just shows so much care and just the validation of the feelings. It's just so powerful. And so that's why, you know, this is, there is a contrast because, uh, an apology can be so powerful, Mm -hmm. but then if done wrong, there can be so many problems with it. And so, um, so we just want to encourage you to conflict can be a very healthy thing in mm-hmm. marriage mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to set you back. It can be as it's discussed and as it's worked on and as you apologize and as you as you really dig into it, you can start moving forward and you can use that conflict to move you forward instead of taking steps back. So but so much of that depends on just admitting, just being able mm-hmm. to admit that you're that you're wrong that you know it's just so many people that just can't admit that they're wrong yeah and yeah you have to yeah and i was thinking you know i always try to imagine the person driving down the road and listening or putting up dishes and folding clothes listening to us and thinking you know how they can take this and apply it to their marriage because it's not going to do you any good just to listen to it and cut it off. But how can you apply this to your marriage? And the thing that I want you to avoid is wishing that your spouse would li- listen to this. Mm. What I want you to do is think what, I mean, ask God, like as soon as you turn this off, like cry out to the Lord and say, is there anything that I need to go to my spouse with and apologize for, or to say that I'm sorry they're walking through. Um, There's a verse in James 1 that says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Mm. So you can ask for wisdom um, in this area for God to give you wisdom and how to speak into your spouse. And so, you know, try to... Um, block out what the enemy wants you to do in finding fault with your spouse and think about what you can take ownership of. Um, it, whether it be something you did, something you said, um, a wrong attitude, um, being short, um, not doing something you said you would do, you know, any of those things, just 
it's okay to say that you're sorry. And those words can be really, really powerful Mm. if done in the right way. Yeah, definitely. That's a good topic, and I'm glad you brought it up. I'm glad we heard it um, through this kind of a funny illustration, but uh, it was great for us to address it. Hey, if you don't already know, um, our new website is out. And so we want to encourage you to go and check out theredeemedmarriage.com. And, excuse me, there's so much in there, and we are so excited it looks um, amazing. It does. We had a we had an unbelievable uh, web developer that that worked on that with us, and we gave him so much liberty just to kind of I don't know. It was really cool to sit with him and say, "Look, this is not for us. This is for somebody that would be just like you. That's looking for something, you know, in you know, needing help with marriage or whatever." And and we said, you know, just imagine that you're that person, and mm-hmm. what would you be looking for? And I just think he painted this unbelievable yeah. picture. Mm-hmm. And um, and so there's a lot of, uh, you know, obviously our podcast. My favorite thing on there is that there's a search bar, and you can actually type in keywords, and it will pull up all of the podcasts f- that um, that have to do with that that topic or keyword. And then, of course, all of our marriage coaching uh, information is on there. There's lots of places that you can uh, sign up for our email list, and you'll actually get something mm-hmm. for that. One of them is a podcast guide, which is really cool. We put that together so that it will give you like our most popular topics and our most downloaded um, podcast episodes, and is such a great tool. And so when you sign up for the email list, you actually get that as a download. And then, of course, you can also uh, get information about our marriage coaching. It's just merchandise is on there. There's a contact form where you can reach out to us. It's just going to be a great resource, and we're going to be able to keep adding to it. So when our retreats get ready uh, to, to go up, they'll go up there. Uh, also had somebody even today that checked out the website and gave us a suggestion for mm-hmm. some other things to yeah. add in the future. So we're just um, we're just so blessed and, and excited about it. So please go check it out, theredeemedmarriage.com, and we'll also put that in the notes uh, here in the podcast. So, um, so we hope you'll check it out and let us know what you think. All right, great being with you again this week. Hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time.